Bardy John Boy, born again on XFM 104.9. Here we are then, Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Raring to go. He's a bit grumpy, Carl. Woken up at because eight o'clock. Because he's from the north. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in London. <laughs> yeah. And London's rubbish, right, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Where can you- you can't even get a band-aid in London, can you? Or grouting. <laughs> in Manchester I could walk to the next shop and definitely get- get some flash or maybe some vim. You can't get it down there. You gotta go to a trendy bistro, haven't you? Carl, why are you grumpy? I told you before, I'm just a little bit tired today. Cause he had to get up with the builders next door woke him up. No. He's always going about his hours. Those bu builders probably got up at six. Yeah, to but get I can their understand builders who, who get up early because they're building outside and they've got to get the job done before it gets dark, but he's working in someone's lounge. If it gets dark, put the light on. It's not- it's not a problem. So why is he starting work at like seven o'clock in the morning? Well because the builders get paid by the day and if you get a builder and go, I'll just do eleven till three, he's not gonna go, I tell you what love, just give me a- just give me forty quid. I didn't do a whole day. It's a day's work, isn't it? So you want to get the most out of them, don't you? Plus he probably wants to finish early so he can have a good night out. Yeah, it's a Saturday night, you know what I mean? He wants to- Yeah, he like, wants to get at least fifteen pints in. And he was cheery, I bet he was whistling and, you know, dancing yeah, around yeah, and tapping, do, do, you know, so I don't know why- how you can be annoyed at that. It's why don't you get earplugs? I don't like it, the idea of earplugs. Why? Because I live in a flat, so it's not as if I'm looking after my house, right? I'd I know. Out already, already I've lost you. No. That wasn't even a whole sentence and I don't know what you're talking about. No, but what I mean is- What? If you live in a house, right, you know that you've turned the lights off downstairs, you know you've- you've- you haven't got a frying pan on, right? Right, well, okay, so, not the really- The peacock keek, going. But I live in a flat, and I don't know what the other people are like, there might be some daft people in there who-, who God, don't- imagine that. Right, who don't turn stuff off. Now if I have earplugs and the fire alarm's going off, yeah. I'm not gonna hear it, I'm gonna have a good sleep, but who knows what could happen. So <sighs> I don't- I don't like earplugs, it's not- it's not safe. Okay. If you live in a block of flats. But I think you'll find, because I've used them, I think you'll find that a fire alarm will cut through I wear them sometimes uh, if it's it, it noisy or I want to go to bed early or something, and I hear my alarm clock and it's- it's- it is- it goes- beep 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 It's All that right. loud. Okay. Well, a, a fire alarm is deafening. Alright, so we've talked in the past about snails who sleep for thirteen years. No you have, that's never been confirmed. In fact the expert didn't- hadn't heard of it. Th well, they do. Okay. I, I read it on different sites. Okay. okay. So how much does it take to wake them up? <laughs> Got you. What do you mean? <laughs> well, they sleep for thirteen years. Yeah, but it's probably. But I don't know what you mean by sleep. It's not the same sort of pattern that we have on a in a mollusk, is it? It's different. What what is sleep? It's it. It's, it's, when, it's when you're sort of shut down. And but they can estivate. They can actually literally no, shut down. No, but they didn't say like, that. They said they sleep. They sleep for thirteen years. <laughs> and if, I, bet, I, I mean, have you ever had like more than ten hours sleep? Yeah. Feel really groggy. Well, yeah. no, I feel good after ten hours sleep. I feel rough. I just was thinking what a snail would be like. Be like, oh, be even slower than normal. Be even slower than you. <laughs> Play a record. Well, anyway, email yeah. in if you know what on earth Carl's talking about. Ever. Yeah. Don't erase none of that good shit. The rhyme came from the pressure heat, then it was laid out on the ground and paved streets. Who's here on XFM 104.9? Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a lot, we've got a lot to get through, we've got a lot to get through. We've got things like, uh, Radiohead to play, we've got Feeder, we've got, you know, Teenage Fan Club, you sure. know. We've got sure. quite, we've got two new competitions, Steve. Go on. A great one coming up, a film competition. I'm excited. That's great. And, uh, uh, a music based competition. Is it right We've to say that Rockbusters is no longer? We've still got Rockbusters. We've really? still, it's hanging yeah, on yeah, by yeah. the oh, skin what? of its I teeth. I thought we got rid of that. I generally, th I thought we'd all agreed that we got rid of that, Robin. No, no. I, think, I think we should do it. I think people like Nobody it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. It's because he got his name in Heat now. It's, it's no, Ricky Gervais, honestly. Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, and Heat said they like Rockbusters. That's why. Carl, he's I thought we had an he's and we agreed that it was not going to happen anymore. He's well, worried about the fans. There's a guy here emailed in, he just emailed in three band names, he said I may as well email in now on the off chance these are right because it's such an arbitrary quiz. Yeah. It's essentially a waste of time. The clues are so F complicated. D. Frida Payne. <laughs> that was a classic. That was a classic <laughs> rockbuster, wasn't it? <laughs> when, when when they start getting a bit ridiculous and that and people aren't getting them. Oh. Then we'll- You can't drink that pop now. Shaka Khan. <laughs> no. That was another that. piece of genius. Well, um, it, it, I think we've already reached that stage, Carl. To be I've truthful, only mate. just got in this river, and there's loads of logs. 
Justin Timber Lake, you said river. <laughs> Lake, you said river. Lake, you said river. Um, <laughs> just few of the highlights of Rockbuster. Can you please promise that this is the last one today? Cause it's really, I think it's just, it's bringing the show down. Uh, Steve, he can't promise he remember the answers today. How can he promise <laughs> what's gonna happen next week? I still right. think it's got legs in it. Let's just see how it goes next week. You're not gonna bring it back next week. It's gotta be finished. We've gotta put an end to it. We've gotta give it a sort of final sending okay, one. Okay, let's, let's, let, I'll tell we've you We've gotta what. smother it, Kyle, for its own I, good. I do, I do wanna trial this new film quiz we've got, cause it's, it, it's, I mean, I'm excited. I think it's the, the best competition we've come up with, to mm. be quite honest. I mean, Carl, it, you, you agree, don't you? It's, it's alright, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a film based quiz. Right. Uh, there'll be a, we'll, we'll play you a clip from a, a classic film. I can tell you the film we're gonna play, it's The Sixth Sense. Right. And there'll be a, a, a question afterwards, and you can win The Sixth Sense. On DVD? Yeah. Not, not the ability to sort of tell when someone's behind you, but just no. the film. You know, you know. Do you believe in sort of like, extra sensory sort of perception and stuff, Carl? Ghosts and that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course uh, you do, of course you do. Yeah, not yeah. ghosts, no, the fact that people maybe can sense, uh, you know, b beings. There was a woman in on the Christian's breakfast show, right? Yeah. Blind woman. Right. Uh, clairvoyant. Is that her name? Uh, forgot. But she, she was a bit useless. Um, <laughs> she was a bit right useless. Now, oh, as it, I'm always worried about what's gonna come yeah, out of Yeah, I'm Carl's worried mouth. what you mean. Do you know what I mean? She's a bit rubbish at being a clairvoyant. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think if you're not that good at something, don't don't go on the radio and do it. Carl, you better leave. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Sorry. What she was saying. So like, what was the relevance of her being uh, blind? What was that for? What did you I say? Just thought it was a bit weird. I think she was using that because the fact that she can't see living people, but she can contact the dead ones. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm so you, when sorry. This is XFM 104.9. No, Once again, to you. Carl's opinions do not necessarily reflect, reflect those anyone. Of, those of any human beings. Any, any other person no. alive today. Sorry, yeah, Carl. So why, 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 how did she demonstrate her, her clairvoyance? Right, why was it not very convincing? She was sat in the chair you're at, mm -hmm. right? And people called Ooh, up and said, I said uh, that. Weird. Said, um, they called up and they said, right, uh, can you uh, have a word with me, Gran? Yeah. And uh, she goes, yeah, she's dead, isn't she? And it's like, yeah. She goes, oh, and everyone's like, oh, she knows the stuff. <laughs> it was literally 50 to be fair. Yeah, and especially with a Gran, because the person sounded about 35, so the chances are yeah. they haven't got a Gran anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was just Unless it's like the fellas from Busted, because they, in the year 3000, it's only, they've only got to a great great granddaughter, and that's a thousand years, so presumably. You know, they can live a lot longer. Yeah. I just wasn't convinced anyway. I don't want to diss her because, you know, she came in and she did her stuff and, and if people believe in it, I'm not gonna put it down, but it just was a little you bit You believe in it? You just <laughs> think she didn't have the real power as opposed to it being rubbish? No, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing going <laughs> on. I don't know what we were talking the about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it, oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just, right, Steve, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> That, that isn't an insult. What were you talking about though? What was it, why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's, it's like, you know, they, they were, they should, they should wear glasses. I- Okay, why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as one. It wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I but should listen. be like to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm doing go. it. I'm going to give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's, it's you. Like you, you always even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. What are you. <gasps> <gasps> oh, that was real. Play a record. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you me from that's now. mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. Is 
and for what it's worth, uh, in my opinion, one of the best things I've done for many a year. It's XFM 104.9. Look at your eyes with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Cayman Pilkington. <laughs> I sometimes wish you spoke like that for real, because <laughs> I, so I wouldn't leave the studio with a headache then. <laughs> there you are, see? It's just come <laughs> stinging back. <laughs> oh dear. A lot of people sort of, I meet from the street, they go, I wish I was Ricky Gervais's mate. No you don't. <laughs> Let me put your mind at rest now, you're not missing anything, am I right, Carl? Who says that, walking along the street? <laughs> no, people With that ever been said? They shut up. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, just thinking. Oh, what's wrong with Ricky Gervais's, mate? Well, no, I've, I've met people, they're friends of friends. Yeah, or... God, he must be fun to be yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. In, a, in an enclosed space. Yeah. yeah. In an echoey small oh, space. Oh, imagine sharing a prison cell with Ricky. <laughs> oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it, Carl? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Well, I'd be the daddy, wouldn't I? I hate it. <laughs> the suicide rate in the prison would shoot through the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now come over here and suck mummies. Now listen. What right. do you reckon, Carl? To, uh, you know, being Ricky's friend, did you find that an exhilarating experience? Something that you were joining the party? It, it's all right for about an hour, and then anything over that is when he's just messing about and he wants to hit me on the head with a tray. We or, went. Uh, we went for lunch yesterday, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had a drink in the week, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? That was that was a good. Is thing. he okay when he's when it's just the two of you? Because I find as soon as there's a third person, well, yeah, just to give he you just a, starts showing off. Well. There's a little bit of that, right? But I went out with Ricky, like he said, right, for a drink in a week, and uh, you know I went home, and Suzanne, the girlfriend, said, uh, "Where have you been?" I said, I've "Been out for a drink with Ricky." Hey, you've been out for a while. What have you been talking about? I'm fr I so sort of sat there for a minute and thought, "There's nothing that I can tell her we've been talking about that she'll show any interest in." <laughs> she said, "Well, you must remember something." I said, "I can't. I can't." She goes, no, something, just anything that you were talking about, what are you talking about? I said, right, the one I remember, <laughs> one of the topics that came up was, imagine that the only way to have a kid was you had to sleep with a squid. <laughs> How many kids would you have? I was saying it was the future and the squid's like, you know, but the only way they could do it now is like a filter, you had to sleep with a squid, I was going, would you? He's going, what do you mean? <laughs> I was going, would you? He said, there's not a time he hasn't gone home with a conversation, it, it, buzzing in his head that he got confused about. Would anyone want a kid that much? <laughs> does, does the child look like a squid when you have it, or is no, it No, I was going, no, no, it's, it's normal, but it's like a filter with a system. The only way you can do it to make sure, you know, you have to, imp you know, you have to impregnate the squid and it's filter, and then you can, you know, test tube baby in the future. Did the busted it, lads mention that? In the time <laughs> he did, but he live underwater. That's yeah, where I got it yeah. from. I said, well, you probably sort of like get quite friendly with it. But eventually, you probably would be breeding with the squids and, you know. So what does prawns. what does Suzanne make of Javex? Has she met him a few times? Yeah, she just said, oh, she can understand why we sort of get on, because we both <laughs> sort of come up with daft stuff all the time, and... Yeah. But I'm quite happy to have a discussion. I love the way that it, it, it talks about his partner like the adult. Well, I like we're the two kids that go out playing that's talking about squids. That is exactly how I see Suzanne. <laughs> it's like if, if she wasn't there, I don't think you'd get out of the house in the morning. Well, she's, she's you'd have tied your shoelaces together. Yeah, you'd have your earplugs <laughs> You'd have forgotten in. to put your trousers the on. The fire alarm would be going off and, you know, someone would left a frying pan on, the builders would be sort of like throwing you round. Yeah, I imagine and she makes you like a round of down. sandwiches. <laughs> well, she, she's noticed that I don't ask as many questions now. Because, like, last night was one of the first times in ages that I'd asked her something, right? What did you ask? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> no, right, do you know, like, I'm always thinking stuff when I'm bored, right? <laughs> if, it's, if it's when I'm washing up or what have you. Yeah. And, uh, last night, um, she was watching, uh, that Midsummer. Uh, Midsummer Murders, Midsummer yeah. Murders, right? Yeah. I don't like it, I think it's rubbish, right? So, uh. I'm sat <laughs> Another there. thing you've got in common, then. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? I bet I watch it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She really likes he it. He was so. standing, he's watching the microwave. She was going, Carl, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. this is the telly. This is the telly. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, this chicken, this chicken's it's, gonna come I've around. I've seen this second. before, this before it comes around again in a minute. <laughs> Carl, come, that's the, what's the washing machine, Carl? <laughs> so she's watching it, loving it, and that, and I'm, I'm bored, because it's just, yeah, it's a boring program. Yeah. So, uh. So I'm sort of looking through magazines that we've got. Trying to find animals without heads. And, yeah. uh, it was in one of her magazines, and there's this article, right, about these I identical twins, <laughs> brothers, right, and one of them meets this girl, right, and it turns out she's got an identical... I've heard of this, this is true. Right. They get married. She's got an identical sister. Right. So, they both go out. So two identical twins, male, going out, going out with two identical twin sisters. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at it going, oh, that's, that's weird. Because you see them, like, they're always wearing the same cardigans and that, and that's like... But then, that's no, right. but if you were a little twin, you probably would fancy the same sort of person, wouldn't but you? But then, I was asking, she was going, Shh, it's getting near the, you know, the plot, the murderer. 
<laughs> if they had a kid, would they look the same? Yeah. Would the, would, would well, not the, necessarily, not necessarily, because it, it depends on what, what genes are passed over. Even though they've got the same exact sets of genes, that, that you don't pass on all the genes, do you? It's 50-50, but you don't pass on exactly the same genes in each sperm, let alone with an identical twin. Yeah, but even though you don't do that, like, my brother and sister don't look like me, but no. you know they were related. Because they share, they share 50% of your and father's genes. And they talk genes. gobbledygook. Yeah. No, you share 50% of your father's genes and 50% of your mother's, but not the same 50% I I on two occasions. I think you completely I've lost, you lost already. it. I've when, lost you brought, already. when you brought in the word genes, yeah, I yeah. thought you were thinking, yeah. what, what, what no, was the No, they wouldn't necessarily. For? They wouldn't necessarily, no. They could do by Did Suzanne chance. look at you? <laughs> Like Oliver Hardy looks at Stan Laurel when he's just like <laughs> nailed his hand to a wall or something. She just, she, she went, ask Ricky tomorrow. Uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then turned up John Nettles. And then turned it up. Yeah. Oh, oh that is brilliant. I think there's a st I heard a story once where two, um, sets of Siamese twins married. What if you fancied the one on the left? Yeah. What if one of them was having an affair <laughs> behind the other one's back? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be difficult to conduct, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you better show what are you up? Doing? He's waking up. What are you doing? What are you hey? doing? What are you doing down nothing. there? What are you doing down there? Nothing. There's no one down here. Well, well, I'll, well, well I think there is because I can I no. can see her sister here. <laughs> no. What's no. she doing? What's she doing? No, just... She's covering for him. What are you covering for him for? <laughs> He's your husband. <laughs> is my wife down there? I read something about some Siamese twins. Go on. And um, <laughs> one of them was saying, you know, oh, we get on each other's nerves and that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But the other one was going, we don't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I ne yeah, I've never and, liked you. I've never liked them, you. One of them was going, oh, you know, I hate doing the washing up, but I'll let her do it. And, um, the, the person doing the interview said, well, why don't you help out? Just dry up and get the job done quicker. And she was like, no, no, I, I can't stand it. I prefer just to hang around there and wait for the, for the other girl yeah. to do the washing up on her own rather than help and get the job done. Sure. Just selfish. <laughs> Well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins. One, one had a job and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah, the other one was unemployed. The other one had a job. She had to go to what? She had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. I'm supporting you, literally. <laughs> then, yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the other one was signing on. <laughs> uh, are you living together? <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> Feeder, just the way I'm feeling on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve and Carl. Right. Just having a having a whale of a time, both of them. They they love being in this room with me for two hours. They, that is their favourite part of the week, I think, <laughs> isn't it? That's, I, I, don't, I haven't said that, but I'm assuming they love it. <laughs> um, right, competition time. Brand new competition we come up with. Uh, my favourite we've ever done, I'll be honest. Um, and a great prize, the six cents. You get a you get a clip of a great film and then you get to keep the great film. Now, I'll just explain this competition. Um, I think Carl is a little bit of a frustrated actor. And so, by the power of technology, Carl takes the role in a film. Um, and, uh, there's a question about it afterwards. Um, this is, uh, a, a scene starring Carl Pilkington from The Sixth Sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Pretty all right? I'm very quiet. I'm um, just, just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but... Your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't. But, like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said. Right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? 
Michael, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, so so men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella, having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just 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 the old fellas having a Twix, but they they talk to you. No. They tell you to do things. No, because they were too busy eating. But what's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, ever. No. Got it. All right. Well, well so, it's a very <laughs> chilling scene. That. That is great. Oh, that is. <laughs> it's a very spooky scene from the film The Sixth Sense. Rick, yeah. I think you've got a question. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Carl played it wonderfully there. The role of the uh, the child that sees weird stuff. But who played the original role? What was the name of the child actor who played the original role? It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win a copy of The Sixth Sense. But I think we can, we can probably play it again later for those that missed it or those yeah, that caught the tail end or those that need we'll another reminder. One. Yeah, you got, yeah, get, get, get your, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes. Get your, um, answers in. We'll, we'll pick a lucky winner and then, uh, We'll play it again, because I just, I think that we can, I think Carl can go to Hollywood with some of the things I've seen there. Mm, absolutely okay. stunning. Absolutely Brilliant. stunning. Ricky at xfm.co.uk. Um, I'm gonna play a, a track now. We tried to play it a couple of weeks ago, but the jumped. So I got a new CD of it. It's Papa Garcia, and this is La Natalie and Nusi. Natalie and Nusi by Papa Garcia. Um, well, we've had lots of emails already. Uh, in fact, my favourite one is a suggestion of the name of that feature, specific to this, today's, is the Twix Sense. Indeed. Which, uh, was great. And feel free to send in your suggestions, because we're going to try and do one a week, a classic film, with Carl in the, in the, you know, an important role. But if you want to, you know, see Carl as maybe as, uh, you know, Michael Corleone in The Godfather, you know, send in, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do, won't we, Carl? And don't, don't imagine that it has to be a, a male character. I imagine that you could play, for instance, Sharon Stone's role in, uh, Basic Instinct. I don't imagine it has to be a human. I mean, I'm a, 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 I mean, an animal he might, object. Be, he might be better suited. He'd be very good as a rock. Yeah. Or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, um, we're gonna, uh, pick up something we, we spoke about before. Um, we're gonna re announce we're gonna play that again, um, in, in a few minutes. But, um, uh, Carl wants to put the record straight, don't you? Carl's fed up with when he comes up with something that's a bit, a little bit fantastic and far-fetched and, wrong, that we take the mickey out of him. So, uh, he's brought in some hard evidence of the story, haven't you? No, do you know, like, I find stuff on the internet and that, mm. right, and I come in and tell you about it and you go, that's rubbish. Yeah. And then you'll say, show your workings, mm. which I've never liked doing. No. When teachers say that, I hate that. Yeah. Because no. I, I normally can't. <laughs> no. No. I've always gone. He's, he's just got the answers five and I go, no, I asked for the capital of China. <laughs> yeah. The answer's five. <laughs> yeah. But, right, so, we started a feature a couple of weeks ago, um, chimpanzee that, the thing about monkeys and stuff. Let's yes. do the, just play the jingle right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Yeah, yeah. Right. right, we started that. That's facts about apes, isn't it? And yeah, monkeys, monkeys, chimps, chimps yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, um, I told you a story about, um, a monkey that was in a zoo. Yeah. And, um, it, it got pally with the zookeeper. Right, yes. Remember? It moved into his house, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and did it like, ultimately have an affair with his wife? Yeah, it liked a little, uh, brandy at night and a cup of tea in the morning, then he went to work and it moved in on its wife. Yeah. Right. Now, I read that in a book. Yes. Right? But, then, I was looking for some more monkey stuff online the other day, mm. and I found the same story. Right. From a different source. Okay. Which is always a good sign. And it's corroborated what you claimed, is it? Kind of. There you go. It's not a different source, though, is it? It's someone who read the same thing as you and printed it's, it themselves. It's, uh, I left out a fact. His name's Oliver. <laughs> what, the monkey? So I got that wrong, yeah. The monkey's called Oliver. Can you see that, Steve? Oh, yes. Right. There's do a picture wanna, of him here. Do you want to read it? Or? Now, do you, do you, where is this from, then? Where, well, I, was, you... I was looking for world famous monkeys online, and it- www.apenaut.org. <laughs> <laughs> this is someone who, in America, is who set up a, a sort of similar website to, uh... I don't know uh, where he is, but, yeah. Okay, uh, 
He was originally brought into the US with twelve other chimpanzees, but immediately stood out as different. He learned to drink, enjoy coffee and beer, and smoke cigars. <laughs> in the evenings, he would sit on a sofa and watch television. If his caregivers were out of coffee, he would walk into the kitchen, pour a cup, and take it into the den. As he got older, he made sexual advances on the wife, and as a result, was sold. I reckon it was a, a stowaway, and to, to, to not get caught, he pretended to be a monkey. Yeah. Whereas really, it was just a. That would make fella. sense, because the final line is, he's now living in retirement in Texas. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I, I get the, my only query, and I don't mean to be disrespective, is that it doesn't really give much more information. I mean, I, I mean, someone who's set up a, a website like this, I'm worried that, what I'm saying is I'm worried he's just kind of an American twin of you. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I mean by that? There's no real hard evidence. There's no kind of dates. There's no uh, references to where it, where he was specifically or what you zoo he was in. Carl Pilkinhorn. <laughs> yes. <from> Dallas. <laughs> Hi. We're cousins. Why do you need to know all that? The story's. What there. do you mean? Why does he know that? Why, why not accept it? Because another fella reckons a chimp moved in on a, a, someone's wife. What I'm saying is, th th he could be as he could be as much of a nutter as you. Do you see what I mean? I th what, what do you mean? Could be is. Yeah, exactly. What and go to that much trouble of like yes. sorting out a website and that? You host a radio show for goodness sake to spout your idiocy. You see, if a website's hardly you know, anything, you might get a job. He was stressed yesterday because we want to do uh, another chimpanzee that. Have we got a new story coming up for chimpanzee that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was stressed yesterday because he's he said I'm really overworked. I'm really getting fed up. He said he said I haven't even um, sorted out the story. Um, about, uh, this monkey. He said, how overworked am I that I, I haven't even got time to sort out a story about a monkey? <laughs> you know how much I love that. Rick, do you think there's any way we could lure Oliver out of retirement to come over and produce this show? I think we probably could. <laughs> I'm uh, parched for a cup of coffee. Would you pop to the kitchen? We're gonna play a bit of Springsteen. Oh, I love him. For Martin Freeman, he said, please play some Springsteen or yeah. Bowie. I'm trying to get him into Motown, but he only likes level 42. Yeah. But this is for him. Eminem, sing for the moment on XFM 104.9. Well, that is the most popular competition we've done, judging by the amount of emails. The Twix sense there. Um, to be fair as well, Rick, there is a question that is answerable. I think that's also a reason why people. Yeah. Have... It, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's because I did it and not Carl, <laughs> probably. Exactly. I asked the question there. Yeah. Um, we're going to play it again because other people want to hear it again, and uh, then we will uh, give the winner's name. And they will win that copy of it. Carl in the sixth sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Hey, all right. Be very quiet. No, I'm just just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but your loss. Like if anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't. But like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff. Like I said, right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well. Uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, so two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just... Just the old fellas having a Twix for it. They, they talk to you? No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating, but. What's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, ever. Just, no. Got it? Alright. <laughs> Oh, oh, there you go. And so the question was, uh, who played the original role of that kid in the car who saw strange things? And the answer is Steve. 
Haley Joel Osment, of course, yeah. uh, who um, is a talented young performer, but I don't think really has anything on Carl Pilkington, who I think made that scene even more chilling and yeah. more uh, atmospheric than the definitely. original. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, we'll give this to, let's see, I think it's uh, Francis Marnie, who's emailed in. Uh, he or she said, I don't know if it's a he or she, but uh, says I that is, basically- I is male and, and he is- No, oh, well, I, think it's I is female and it, Francis or Fran- I Francis, don't know, anyway, do I? That could be a fake name, who knows. But uh, he, let's assume it's a he, he says he's a sad little nerd who, um, it was, it was his birthday yesterday and only his mum remembered, even his best friend forgot. Definitely a, definitely um, a bloke. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I can't really relate to life as a bit of a loser, a bit of a no. nerd, so I don't really know what he's talking about, but I imagine a lot of our audience do, so let's give it to him, sort of. I imagine he's a little four-eyed, geek, <laughs> oh, little lanky. Loser. Little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, as I look again, I notice he's not even got the name right, he's spelled it Haley Joel Osman. Oh. It's Osman, but, um, so he really is pathetic, I mean, that's, what a pathetic Actually, little Actually, well, totally fun now, now we've humiliated him, don't give him the prize, give okay. it to else. Well, it's on TV tonight anyway, on ITV, no, so. No, no, well just done, Says, thank you for uh, listening and uh, well done for spotting who Carl was trying to. And whatever girl you fancy at school, ask her out. Say, come back to my place, watch The Sixth Sense. Yeah. She'll love it and you'll be guaranteed a shame. Why do you assume he was at school? I don't know, because his, his spelling is terrible. Although I'm looking at Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just a very badly put together email. I just assumed it was a kid. Right. Well, if he yeah. is a kid now and he's going through four interviews, he's probably really. I never dreamt it was a kid. I'm, really? I feel a bit bad now. Well, you thought it was a sort of 25-year-old loser, yeah. even more pathetic in a way. Yeah, and now I'm worried <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've embarrassed, a, you know, a, a, an adolescent mm. live on, well, one of the biggest radio stations in the building. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even the biggest radio station in the building. <laughs> I true. can't believe that. It's <laughs> the smallest radio station in this building. Right, now we've done that, right? Are we doing a proper competition? Yeah. Setting up the old, uh... Rockbusters, rock your favourite, yeah. innit? Well, let's play a tune before. I can't, I don't think I can face that well, straight it's just away. That we've, also, we've also got... That song sounds alright. Aren't we? Uh, yeah. Another new feature. That, sound, that song that. sounds good. Can I just say before we play a record that, uh, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Dickers! <laughs> Richard oh, Anderson. Oh, Dickster, you Dicky Ducky Dido, <laughs> are ya? If you're a new uh, listener then you won't have uh, come across Richard before, but- But he loves the our, show. He's our biggest fan. He's a bit of a- and he loves the show, he tapes it and listens back to it four or five times. But he, the great thing about him is he's not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism. Oh, well! What's he said? What's he well, said? Well, all I'm going to say to you is he said, um, is it true that companies are now getting rid of hold music <laughs> and are instead using your show to irritate their customers while they're waiting on the phone? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we're trying to we'll look into that, Dickie, but thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I need direction. Teenage Fan Club on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Do keep your suggestions coming in for uh, roles that you'd like to see Carl playing in future editions of this that is, quiz. This is the most popular comedy we've ever done. Has it got a name yet? Have we come up with a name? Uh, Holly Wouldn't. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, anyway, we had some suggestions. Um, <laughs> Neil Wilson in Bedford, he suggested he'd like to see you, Carl, playing the role of Clyde the Monkey <laughs> in yeah. uh, Every Which Way But Lose. That'd be great. Oh, and uh, also an excellent suggestion from Lee Gridley in Essex. The obvious role for you is, of course, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man. I, I said that, didn't I? That's perfect. That'd, That'd be like, great. Yeah. Just imagine going, okay, you might remember, bet two for t yeah. good, remember, yeah. Well, you've lost again, yeah. Uh, that'd be fantastic. I'm worried that you, I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, Carl. Can you play someone who's that clever? <laughs> Give it a go. Yeah. I want to do Elephant Man. <laughs> okay. Why, what sort of ideas you got for Elephant Man? Well, I don't know whether I'd be him or, like, the Doctor. Mm. What would you say if you were the Doctor? Just like, uh, oh, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, can I, can I, have you seen your head? <laughs> <laughs> or he goes, I'm not an animal, and you go, wow. <laughs> it's Judging by your head, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Forrest Gump. Yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. It's loads, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll keep them coming in. That's brilliant. So, uh... The competitions don't stop there, sadly. Yeah. No. Rockbusters. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, how about, right, we've got this other, other thing, right, this other music thing. Yeah. How about we make that part of How it? How many competitions have you got? No, well, this is what I'm thinking, right? Because we can, if, you, if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, 
then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your rockbusters and uh, and one of these. Right. Are these Come the on prizes, Carl? They're the prizes. Well, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what we got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off yeah, now. I think I'm it's, it's either warm in here or, or this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by uh, <laughs> various artists, including Jay Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I love you. We see it's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Some great, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters. Oh, yeah. That's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about. The Best Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness. That's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince. You can have that in your collection. Probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so uh, subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So not oh, that yeah. bad a selection actually this week. He's Cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, right, we here we right. go. Rockbusters. Rockbusters. First one. Uh, we'll do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E. Right. And the second one. That builder's a I've bit. I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. that, that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute. Yeah. Alright. And that's B T. BT. BT. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song and you've gotta guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it and then the show on the Here we go, here we go. There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM type okay, song. That's great. Email so, so only. First, sorry, I should just clarify that the first two are uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's okay. right. It's that's so right. confusing. No one's ever going to figure this out. They will though. They will. They'll do it. Ricky.gervais <laughs> at XFM. Hey, listen, we've got UK. the best fans in the world, Steve. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Without them, we ain't nothing. Yeah. So good luck to you. <laughs> Do you want to pick a track, Steve? Uh, I'd love to. I want to wear some monkey magic. I want to wear some chimpanzee that. I want to wear some aping around. <laughs> we've got that still to come. Oh, to that, I really. can't believe it. We've got Rockbusters. <laughs> that film sounds good. And we've got, oh, look at him up in Hollywood. And we've got, like, oh, monkey me, monkey you. We've got Gibbon on the horn. <laughs> Jesse Maiden, this is a great track. Coldplay, Clocks on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, give me some monkey magic, Carl. Hang on, you better do the jingle, ain't you? Oh. Oh, chimpanzee that! Oh, Brilliant. you'll like this one. Um, what I've found is, uh, found out like a lot of monkeys' names, like that's how I found out about Oliver. Yeah. What do you mean no. you found out a lot of monkeys' names? Well, there's uh, a lot of monkeys out there. And you think they're just called monkey and what have you, but they're all given names, right? So this this one that I found about, bit of a weird name anyway. It's actually called Crap. Its name, right? And so they they they're not born with those names. It's not like their parents give them those names. You know, they just yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. But well, this one, right? And um, it's called Crap. Yeah, I know. Right, but do you know what it's famous for? What Crap? Yeah. No Go one. Is it involved with this show? It, um, the first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> yeah, again, I will say not by choice. There is no way that a chimp would go down to Camden Lock and go, uh, are you a registered tattooist? <laughs> I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the cleanest, yeah. Okay, um. Can I have a look through your book? Can I have a look through your book? Um, I'm looking for something quite gothic, but, um, uh, I'd, I'd like, you know. What's your name? Crap. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that because you're not drunk, are you? I have another drink. I have another drink. I've had some, I've had some, uh, um, bongo and that's all. <laughs> uh, but no. What are you talking about? The first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> what are you talking about, There's Carl? gotta be more information. Don't tell me you're leaving it there. There's gotta be more information. That was it and then I read it thinking, well that's weird because that means there's loads of monkeys with tattoos on their head. If that's the first one. No, it could be still the only one. The first and only. Yeah, but would they report that? Well, I, you don't what do you mean, would they report it? This isn't the Washington Post you're reading. <laughs> this is mentalists who do websites about themselves every day. 
I, 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 what? There's got to be a third act to that news? story. Why is that news? Why is that news? How did you come across that? Well, do you, you First mean, nut monkey with tattoo head, W- I mean, what are you talking about? But why did it have its name tattooed on its head? I don't know. Didn't, it didn't say, it didn't say that. I, I mean, I, yeah, I know, it's mad. But, <laughs> but it didn't say why. Was that enough for you, though? Did you feel satisfied out having read that? Did you not have other I questions? mean, that, there's no way that that is in the Guinness Book of Records. There's no way uh, that that is uh, excited in the Guinness Book of Records. I just read it as like, what a weird name for a monkey. And then, <laughs> ooh, you won't have that on your head. What and, would be a good name for a monkey? I don't know, uh, anything but that, really. Yeah. Uh. Dave. Ted. <laughs> but, what do you think of that then? Well, I don't know what to think about it, because I don't know what, I don't know what you're telling me. I don't know, I don't know that that's news, I don't know that it's true. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I don't know where to start with that. Is that all you found? You found a, something about a, ta- no, a monkey? I tell you right, when I was searching for stuff on monkeys, right? Yeah. I was searching around, like I always do, looking, finding information, right? Yeah. And, um, found out, uh, are you aware of the Iceman? The Iceman? Yeah. Go on. Right. And to me, the monkey thing was more... What's the Iceman? Oh, uh, the man that was found in the ice. So you're aware the of him? The Neanderthal man. Right, yeah. It's Ricky, do you know Not a monkey, the Iceman? No, no, I know, but I just was looking at, like, info. Right. The 5,000 year old fella who was preserved in a, in a glacier. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find that more fascinating than the monkey? Well, I, I know that it's true. Yeah, it's true, but do you find it more fascinating? Well, simply <laughs> because it's true I find it more fascinating. I can't act on some... Uh, uh, if someone... Uh, anything that's true is more fascinating. But, you see, what I get from the monkey thing, you yeah. go, oh, I wonder, wonder if it was happy about that, and... <laughs> but you accept it straight away, you accept that that is true and interesting, and I don't know what that is. I mean, to me it sounds like a bit of cruelty towards animals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, no, uh, uh, I mean, if that's true, it's disgusting to tattoo uh, a monkey's head. It's disgusting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way, that's what I'm saying, it doesn't do a- if a monkey, if they, if they reported that a monkey, um, went in and got a tattoo, <laughs> and chose it itself, and then was like, riding a Harley Davidson down <laughs> Camden, I'd go, that is incredible, but I'd really want to see it on the news, and it mustn't be anywhere near the 1st of April. You know what I mean? I think you've just blown next week's. <laughs> <laughs> Letter to Hermione, David Bowie of Space Oddity album, XFM 104.9. See, do, 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 I don't know where, I, I, I thought you'd sort of learnt a little bit, Carl, what is a, an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What, why the truth is so much more fat? Even a little bit, uh, even something that's just, uh, you know, mild, but is definitely the truth, is so much more interesting that, than just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right, it's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know, Carl's go- looking at you, going, "There's a ghost that can turn custom into <laughs> wine." <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what you say after that. There's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, the, the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, "You know what? Uh, God, right? He's incredible." I go, "I'll stop you there." It, uh, the fact that he can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, "You know, a cockroach can live." five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is gonna amaze you. You yeah. can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> <laughs> Come over no, here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, you are gonna love it. Yeah? You're gonna love me. You are gonna love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on... I suppose logic and, and, and science and- so But what, I'm amazed by the world and- and- So the Iceman, why- why does that amaze you? What's- what's like, ooh? Well they- they, they found a, some- a, a part of our preserved past. You know, it's interesting, I-, I you know, I, again, I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah. Go it's on. just that- 
that, that line on its own like that, you know, they found an ice man is great, but then it went on and on and it's going on about, you know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, <laughs> an old fellow on holiday somewhere, uh, where did they find it? In Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills and, He was uh, walking? In the hills. In hills? Was yeah. he a transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. In the hills. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking, walking about and he sees this body in the, in the snow and he thinks, oh. So he calls the, calls the police up and they come and have a look and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then they di dig it up and find out he's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right. And he's, and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Right. And they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right. His knuckles are drugging on the floor. <laughs> yeah. He's a Neanderthal man. They yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen? Who does he belong to? Yeah. But the chances are whoever murdered him is also dead. 5,000 years ago, probably, uh, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a murder investigation. No, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. <laughs> it's no, not that, a murder investigation. Uh, yeah, just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you. <laughs> but, um, this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he him? have a spear <laughs> yeah. and a leopard skin? I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now, you've got to ask me a question and I will answer it the best way, but what are you saying? I'm what saying, is your question? Right, he you probably spent a load of money trying That's not to a question. Out. That's not a question. Yeah, but let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it, right? <laughs> Three thousand years ago he, he died, mm. right? So then they start messing about with it. Saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was it was ages ago. Then you start digging his belly open, seeing uh, last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> he was now else around again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him, and then said, "Hang on a minute, are, are you sure that he died by like a spear?" Let's dig him up again. So they dig him up again and find some splinter or Sorry, something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know, something. Yeah, they, 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 sorry, it's not either or. They don't, they didn't pull a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's not an old man in a bed in the yeah. corner or somewhere. Yeah, going, oh, Ted, oh, what are you doing? Stomach. I'm just, I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a skit. Okay, uh, okay, you yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. What if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the Carl of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through that going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it, they don't dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works. We're gonna get such a bad rep. Oh well, dear. Well, each to their own, if you like it. I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh, will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. It sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit... <laughs> I'd love and that. they come down, yeah. But what worries <laughs> me is they might bump in- what if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And they, they go are. up and they- they okay. start another planet. They can act- they say, oh. we'll ask you three questions and if you answer them correctly, we will not blow up your planet. Yeah. We'd be doomed. Well, or, it depends. It depends. Well, they ask you, don't they? What if they said- what if they said, right, Carl, what's the weirdest thing ever found in China? I say, every Chinese kid. And they go, okay, right. Okay, interesting. Two, all right. What and don't you see anymore? What do you see an old bloke are doing? Don't see an old fella e eating a Twix. Yeah, and they say, um, uh, what if they asked you, what's across the road from you when you're washing up? Uh, well, there's a few, three things. Do you just want one of them? No, yeah. I want all three. You want all three? There was a Chinese kid dancing about in his underpants. Yeah. There was a bouncer every yeah. night getting ready to go to work. And the third one, the old woman reading a book, the same book. And they night. go, right, your planet's saved. <laughs> see, Gork, see. back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are in superior rates. <laughs> <laughs>
Eve featuring Gwen Stefani. Let me blow your mind. XFM, 104.9. Well, moving on, moving on. Answers? Nearly done. Let's play Rockbusters. All right, um, first one was, um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E, the answer there, Eminem. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. And uh, that was Prodigy, smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that effect. There you go. No. Right, so have you got a winner? Yes, uh, Rob Preston from Croydon, he has got all three correct, and he wins a that selection bag of, of shite. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so good luck, enjoy that, uh, Rob. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Sell it. Record and tape exchange in <laughs> 40 minutes of receiving it. I imagine the one good album that he likes. <laughs> Bob didn't on the tracks for all this bag of shite, please. <laughs> Should we play a record? <gasps> Absolutely. Um, uh, can I just ask now, what are we thinking with Rockbusters? Are we sticking with this? or Because I really thought we'd cancelled it. What, about, what about that to? format we've just done where there's like two... This is another off-air discussion, I think. Well... I just feel the listeners should be able to contribute. They do. Yeah. They phone and say, the show's rubbish, mm. move on, um, can, can we experiment on Carl? I'm yes. a doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, would like to tattoo on would Carl. Would like to tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Carl, have you got any tattoos? Have you, have you ever thought about that? Any kind of piercings? Don't like the idea. Don't no? mess, don't mess with your body and that. Okay. He doesn't like yeah. the human body, he's scared of it. But I told you, didn't I, about me uncle, oh, Tattoo Stan, we've talked about that, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> Tattoo, Tattoo Stan, Stan, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got loads, and I, yeah. I think now he sort of, you know, looks in the mirror and thinks, oh, what have I done? Yeah. But then again, so do you. I was With telling, life, telling Ricky before about someone who had a tattoo. Uh, it's a bit horrible, really, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the t the skin thing. Oh God, yeah. You're not going to tell us it again. I'm, I'm hoping it's not true because it's from Carl, but it's pretty disgusting. But yeah, I'm, I'm, fortunately, because there's no paranormal or animals <laughs> <laughs> acting like humans involved, I think it might be true. It's a fellow who kept his dad's tattoo. Yeah, he just sort of when his dad passed away, he got the skin off and put it in a frame. Who'd you ask to do that? Oh, man alive! Uh, Ashes to Ashes, that's, sorry, um, before we, Barry, you don't, <laughs> before we come in, I've got do a Stanley knife. Do you do any other services? Like what, my son? I'll just, just pop, pop some of him in a, in a jar for me. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, how do you? I mean, that I is. I bought this clip frame from IKEA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can just yeah. leave that between. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, oh, that I, is I imagine right. your father is a man who's probably appalled by the idea of tattoos, earrings, things like that. I imagine he's quite an old school gent. He's, he's never sort of said anything, but uh, if you came back with an earring, what would he have said when you were a youngster? I never saw him that much as a kid, so I don't think he'd have noticed. My mum would have said, "What have you done that for?" Yeah, our kid had a tattoo. And, uh, and, a, and an earring. Sorry, is this the one that took, uh, borrowed a tank from the army to go and get a packet of fags? Yeah. Wow, well, there you go. We must tell that story again next week. For yeah. those that are fairly new listeners, that's got to seem tantalising. Yeah. Your brother once drove a tank down to the local shops to buy some cigarettes. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's an extraordinary story. But that's it. We don't it was that other auntie you told me about in the week. Not Auntie Nora, the one that farted for five minutes, but there's another auntie you talked about. How many aunties have you got? I haven't really got another auntie. I've got me, me brother. Yeah. Who I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. My sister I hadn't seen for about twelve years. Then I saw her again, and then she got fed up because I said, "Oh, you had a new kid, and you went with all the same. I've seen one. I've seen them all." Yeah. Why are you saying that to your sister? Your sister, you haven't seen her for how long? I hadn't seen her for about twelve years, and then for some reason I met her in a car park in Wales. Right. <laughs> and um, it's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And um, she got she got in the back of the car and she said, "Oh, I want to show you something, right?" And uh, she got this picture out and said, "Look at that." And it was one of my new nieces and nephews. You it was her, her, her daughter or, or her girl. son. Yeah. yeah, or whatever. And uh, she said, look at that. And I said, oh. And I sort of said, well, there's no point showing it me. All babies look the same. Don't there's they? no point in showing it me. It just takes two seconds of your life to go, oh, lovely. Yeah, right. That's all you have to do. If it was a first, yeah. I'd say, oh, I'd show a bit of interest even though do I was the Do you think the novelty wore off forever, the second kid, third kid? <laughs> 
Six kid. <laughs> I think even she should be bored of looking at pictures of babies. Kind of a woman is she? And can I get her phone number? Alright, <laughs> <laughs> is that it then? Play a tune. Have we got- is this it? Is this yeah, it? Have this we, is it? Have we got to wrap it all up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I forgot to bring in a song for the ladies this week, so I thought I'd play a song for people who enjoy the work of Deep Purple. <laughs> <laughs> that run and run! <laughs> <laughs> Here's Deep Purple, see you next week. <laughs> Bye!